What do you mean by an SMPS? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term SMPS? Well, let's find out. So the term SMPS is the abbreviation for switch mode power supply. Switch mode power supply. That is what SMPS stands for. So an SMPS is basically a device that converts AC voltage to a regulated DC voltage. That is if we take a particular SMPS device like this, if this is an SMPS and if an alternating like this is given as the input to this particular SMPS, then we'll obtain a regulated output DC voltage. This is what an SMPS stands for. So how does this happen? Well, for that, first let us understand the basic working of an SMPS. So after we understand the basic working, then we'll construct a simple circuit for the purpose of executing the requirement of an SMPS. So first let us see the basic principle behind the working of an SMPS. So first let us take an alternating voltage source like this. That is this is a source that produces an alternative voltage that is an AC voltage is produced by this source. So now in the case of an SMPS what we should first do is that this alternative voltage must be passed through a rectifier circuit like this. So a rectifier circuit is basically an electronic circuit that converts AC voltage to DC voltage. But here when this particular AC voltage is passed through this rectifier, we obtain unregulated DC voltage. So here AC voltage is converted to unregulated DC voltage. So therefore this unregulated DC voltage must be converted to a regulated DC voltage. So for that what we do is that this particular unregulated DC voltage is connected to a particular switch like this. It is connected to a particular switch and then the output of this particular switch is connected to a particular filter circuit. So now what happens is that this switch is periodically turned on and off on and off, on and off. So once we do that, what we see is that in the case when the switch is turned on, we obtain a particular DC voltage like this. And in the case when the switch is turned off, it, it would be like this. There is no, there will be no DC voltage. Again, when the switch is turned on, we obtain something like this. And therefore, we get a DC voltage like this. That is a periodic DC voltage is obtained. So now when this particular DC voltage is passed through a particular filter circuit, we obtain a regulated DC voltage as the output. A filter circuit is basically a circuit that is used to remove the AC components that are present inside a particular voltage source. So it will contain capacitors, inductors, etc, etc. So with the help of those, it will remove the AC components present inside here and would give a regulated DC voltage as the output. As simple as that. This thus simply is the working of what you refer to as a switch mode power supply. So here in this case, it is practically difficult for us to manually keep on turning on and off and on and off of this particular switch. So therefore, in order to avoid that, this switch is replaced with a semiconductor device, maybe a MOSFET or whatever. It is replaced with a semiconductor device like this. So it is replaced with a semiconductor device and over here at this particular terminal, a particular signal like this is given. So this kind of a signal is referred to as a pulse width modulated signal. So this much amount of time is the time for which the switch will be in the on condition and this much amount of time would be the time for which the switch will be in the off condition. So therefore periodically the switch will be on, off, on, off on off so therefore by feeding this onto this particular switch we will obtain a particular chopped up dc voltage like this that the switch will be alternately turned on and off and on and off and thus it will help us convert an unregulated dc voltage to this kind of a dc voltage so now here in this case we can say that a pwm generator can be placed over here but what we saw was that a pulse width modulated signal was something like this but this much amplitude is what we refer to as the reference voltage here. But this reference voltage, how do we take this reference voltage? We can't just blindly take some value for this reference voltage. For that what we do is that a particular line is pulled from this particular output of this particular filter like this. 
and this thus is passed through this over here which is then passed through a comparator which then compares the value of this particular regulated DC voltage and provides a particular reference voltage value to this particular pulse width modulator generator and therefore as a result of this this thus would generate a pulse width modulated signal and feed it on to the particular switch thereby creating a particular regulated DC voltage. So now the one other thing that you guys can do over here is over here we can place a transformer that is to this particular switch a particular transformer can be placed like this. So this transformer is placed over here to provide electrical isolation that is whatever happens in the output and the input does not affect each other that is whatever happens at the output will not affect the input and whatever happens at the input will not affect the output that is they are electrically isolated from each other that is why we can use a particular transformer here this can be a step up transformer or a step down transformer so this thus is the basic principle behind what you refer to as an SMPS and this thus is the basic circuit diagram behind a particular SMPS or a switch mode power supply as simple as that. So now here let us see the waveforms that are associated with this particular SMPS. It is very simple it just has one waveform which is the waveform for the output voltage V0. So now let us see the output voltage V0. So we saw that when the switch was in the on condition we saw an output voltage like this where this amplitude is equal to the reference voltage that was obtained from the output which is passed through a comparator just like what we saw in the circuit before. So now when the switch is turned off what we saw was that no voltage passes. Again when the switch is turned on we get a voltage like this. Again when the switch is turned off no voltage passes. Again when the switch is turned on a voltage passes and again when the switch is turned off no voltage passes. So we get a waveform like this. So what we can observe is that the average value of this particular voltage is obtained somewhere like this. So a value of this much amount of average DC voltage is obtained at the output. So if you want to improve or increase this particular average voltage all you have to do is you have to make the pulse width modulated signal in such a way that the switch is turned on for more amount of time and the switch is turned off for lesser amount of time. So if this is the case then we observe that the average value of the DC voltage would be somewhere around here. So this is the output waveform that is associated with a particular SMPS or a switch mode power supply. So therefore from this what we can understand is that the value of the average voltage VAVG is equal to this particular reference voltage whatever is the reference voltage this particular reference voltage VREF into the duty cycle of this pulse width modulated signal where here the duty cycle D is given as the time for which this switch is turned on divided by the total time which is T on plus T off as simple as that. So this just simply explains what you refer to as a switch mode power supply. So guys that just sums up what you refer to as a switch mode power supply as simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as an SMPS and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, until next time I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.